All right, Edgar Rojas joining us. Um, we, we, we cut right into uh, the period of time where I'm supposed to be doing your introduction. Um, I think it. probably the introduction that I'm going to give is the what you're going to be talking about is that you recently came out with the ransomware control matrix, which has been getting a lot of feedback and is a great starting point to like a lot of these things um, where so many folks are just like, where do I begin? And I think the RCX is a fantastic way to Whoa. get started. And nice. then from there, start to use that to build stronger security. Um, Ed, I'm going to leave it to you and I'll be running cool. Q&A in the background. So Sounds folks, good. same kind of thing. Throw your Q&A in the Q&A button, not in the chat. Uh, I'll be doing a Q&A with Ed at the end of his presentation. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Let me just share my screen here. And I think we're a go, correct? You're good to go. Beautiful. I just want to make sure it's a... Uh... There we go. Okay. So... Uh, thank you, Bryson. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Ed Rojas. I'm a director at Tata Consultancy Services. And the presentation today, as Bryson mentioned, is about the uh, ransomware control matrix. Before we begin, uh, I'd just like to get this stuff out of the way. All the views expressed are mine, don't represent my employer, and definitely don't represent uh, those of the event organizers. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, what is the ransomware control matrix? Obviously, we're going to do uh, talk about how to use it. Uh, what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? We're going to go through all that stuff. And if we have time, we'll go through uh, a live uh, test or a little demo uh, at the rcxmatrix.org. So what's the RCS matrix? What's the uh, ransomware control matrix? I'm not going to tell you the importance of our ransomware that is on everybody's lips every single day. The idea was uh, my colleague and I, uh, Arya Rahimi, and I started doing a research last year. And one of the things that we wanted to do was, well, the basic question is, with all these investments that, that everyone makes in cybersecurity and, and all this large number of companies in the in the industry and a billion dollar industry, how come we're always getting ransomware? Uh, I mean, it's not decreasing, it's actually increasing. And it, it seems to be complicated, right? Every, everything about ransomware is complicated. And when we did the research, we found that a lot of the services out there, the ransomware readiness assessments or ransomware maturity assessments, it all focuses on how to quickly recover. You already been ransomware, you already have the nice little note, hey, you ransomware. And the focus is on how quickly to recover. How are your backups, how are your restores and uh, incident response plans and things like that. And we thought, why don't we just see if we can do something to help provide a little uh, a framework that will help companies identify and mitigate ransomware attacks at earliest as possible. Let's not wait until it's a catastrophic situation. Let's try to be as proactive as we can. And that's what we did, right? So we decided to, in part of the, our, our research, well, there's a big storm coming here, so hopefully we don't lose internet. Uh, part of our research identified the ransomware kill chain. If you're not aware of this, it's something that was uh, 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 sent out to the uh, to the uh, community last year by GroupSense during their RSA presentation in uh, 2022. And what GroupSense, the, the folks there, what they did is identify the ransomware is that follows a three-stage approach, access, exfil for exfiltration, encrypt for encryption. And as I said before, a lot of the services out there focused on the notification side over here by at the end of encrypt. What we wanted to do, what my colleague Ari and I wanted to do was focus on as early as possible. So our focus for the ransomware control matrix, it's on the access and exfiltration phase, okay? And what we also did is obviously we wanted to use well-known frameworks. Well, there's nothing more known than 
the MITRE ATT&CK and MITRE DEFEND framework. So we took these three ideas to create a ransomware control matrix, right? And the idea for the ransomware control matrix is a framework to identify a set of controls that need to be deployed for organizations to have a chance to detect and mitigate as early as possible a ransomware attack. Now, it's not just a question of install and off you go. Obviously, they have to be properly deployed, properly configured, properly monitored. But that's the whole idea. It's let's identify a set of controls okay, that need to be deployed to detect and mitigate ransomware attacks. So in the previous conversation during the uh, uh, the opening of the event, Bryson said that we view systems in isolations, and we should view systems as an entire uh, uh, network of systems. And we're going to see how the ransomware control matrix represents a really nice graphical how all of these systems are interconnected. Okay, so going back in the research. We looked at CISA.gov, which is a fantastic resource for ransomware uh, attack information. We looked at a lot of information from research companies. And what we started to do was identify what are the well-known techniques that attackers use to start a ransomware attack. And we started writing down these techniques. And what we did then is we used the MITRE Defend framework to identify what should be the cybersecurity countermeasures that we can use to mitigate any type of attack that starts with these techniques. And what we did is we found, obviously, we identified seven techniques. If you go and you look at the CISA.gov techniques or, or research on ransomware, it, during that uh, research paper, it identifies the techniques that were used to start the attack by those ransomware families. And the same thing do all, uh, happens in all the ransomware research that goes in depth. And as I said, we identify the seven well-known techniques and MITRE ATT&CK identifies the seven techniques in the initial access phase. And we should be familiar with these techniques, correct? We've all known phishing, supply chain compromise, trusted relationships, and so forth. So once we identify the techniques, we then went ahead and we mapped each of the MITRE, what MITRE Defend calls artifacts, and we mapped those artifacts to each of those techniques. So for example, uh, phishing or technique T1566, here's a set of MITRE artifacts, Defend artifacts that need to be in place to mitigate any attack that uses phishing as a technique, okay? So we started doing that. We did one per technique. So for example, technique 1189 or drive-by compromise. We went ahead and we also identified for each technique, three common attack vectors that is used for each technique. So drive-by compromise, compromise website, click on an email, takes you to a link or click on a pop-up window, right? So you go to a location that has malware, it gets installed on your system and off we go. And here the 11, uh, what MITRE Defend again calls artifacts or the uh, cybersecurity measures, countermeasures that need to be in place to mitigate this type of attacks. Okay, so there's 11 of them. We went then to the next one, uh, external public facing applications, T1190. There's 10 controls. So we start to see something, and let me just get my coffee here. We start to notice something really quickly. Why cybersecurity is so difficult. Two techniques, 21 basic cybersecurity countermeasures. Uh, that's, that's incredible, right? 21 against two, that's, uh, you, can't, you can't win. So what we did, we started creating the matrix. And the matrix looks like, again, MITRE DEFEND. Here's your defensive control mechanisms and how it maps to each of the techniques. And one of the things that we notice is, wow, some of these MITRE DEFEND uh, artifacts apply to multiple techniques. We, we, we didn't expect that, so that was pretty cool. That means that 
we're actually not looking at 21 controls, so it makes us feel better. All right, we, we, we're in the right direction. Then we get slapped in the face because we looked at phishing. Phishing is humongous, 16 different controls just for phishing. And again, you know, we did the whole uh, investigation, the whole mapping. Let's say an average of 15 uh, modern defense artifacts per technique, seven techniques. Again, it becomes complicated. That's 105 uh, control mechanisms. It becomes really complicated. But anyway, we put together this, and now we have the beginning of a really nice looking matrix. Here's all our MITRE DEFEND, and here's how each of those uh, MITRE DEFEND uh, countermeasures help us mitigate attacks that start with these uh, well known, nine well known attacks. And we start to see, and like I said, a nice little matrix, and we start to see that, for example, user geolocation logon pattern analysis helps with five of the seven techniques. The problem when we got to this stage, it's simple. What the heck is user geolocation logon pattern analysis? What's a relay pattern analysis? I contacted a couple of friends, uh, uh, Wendy Nather, Liz, who I saw just joined here not too long ago, and all their friends. And I'm like, what, what do you think this means? And, and we had a nice conversation about this. And we figured that what we needed to do is we need to identify what, what it actually means. We need to identify those controls that we know, love, and hate. So we did that. And this is the beginning of the ransomware control matrix. To me, it's beautiful. This is, this is my baby. This is gorgeous, right? What does it do? It shows you under security controls a total of, I think it's 82, maybe 84 controls, controls that we know, right? Web application firewalls, vulnerability scanning, web filtering, so forth. And we map them again to each of those techniques. Presented this to a few of my colleagues. They agreed that it was good. Uh, my friend down in, in Colombia, Andres Almanza, uh, recommended that we present this to other CISOs in the region. I organized a series of events focused for CISOs in Latin America. I've been doing this for 10 years, so I know a few CISOs. And I contacted this before I released this to the industry a few weeks ago. I validated this with about 40 or 60 different CISOs. And I've collected all of their comments and, and, and into the making this framework a little bit better and easier to read. I believe it was like the third or fourth CISO that I presented this, uh, a friend of mine out of Brazil. And I was explaining to him about the matrix, how it works. Within three minutes, he said, Ed, shut up. I've already validated it. And I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's pretty cool, but what are you talking about? So he said that sometime in November last year, his company was ransomware. And when they received the report a month later, it, they told them in the report how the attackers got a foothold of, the, of their network. What they did is they used a user account that was on a copier machine that was connected to their network. And I said, oh, so they use technique 1078, valid accounts. That's the last technique there on the, on the right, the last column. And he said, yeah, exactly. And he said, Ed, while you were explaining this, I was going down, I see a check mark, and I go to the left to identify the controls. And I kept going down, and then I, I arrived at IAM. He said, that's exactly the recommendation in the report, you need to implement an IAM solution in your network because we didn't have it. And he said, so I validated. Within three minutes, I validated that the matrix works. Then he said that they can use that, this matrix as well as a way to help the CISO with their strategy, with their security program strategy. 
to measure how well they're doing in the strategy. Those are things I didn't think about. So, so that's one comment to the industry, to the community. If you start to use this, let me know how you're using it. If you find other uses, also recommendations on how to make it better. Anyway, during the validation with the CISOs, got a lot of very good comments. Uh, one of them was, and I thought it was amazing, can you group this into basic controls and advanced controls? Basic meaning these are the ones that we definitely need to have. And advanced basically building on those basic controls. I said, that's a, that's a really good idea. Uh, uh, Andres Almanza that I mentioned before said, can we show somehow which are the detection controls and which are mitigation controls? And I said, sure, let me, let me play with it. This is what we came up with. This is version two, this is the current version. What I did here, it's, it's, I divided into three categories, uh, foundational, advanced, and elite. I like elite, and I'll tell you in a second why. And I decided to use foundational instead of basic because, you know, marketing, I mean, marketing drives the, uh, our industry, so why not? Uh, blue, it's uh, detection, and red, it's mitigating controls. By the way, this is exactly the same. I haven't changed anything. The comments are the same. This, obviously, it's a little bit more digestible. It's easier to review. It's easier to look at. I tell you, I spend a whole bunch of time reading about color theory and everything to come up with this nice little color so that when you look at it as a CISO, you're nice and relaxed. So the foundational, really quick foundational is a total of 28 controls. Six are detection, 22 are um, remediation or mitigation. And, and here's another announcement. The matrix is flexible, right? If you go to rcxmatrix.org, you can actually download the Excel spreadsheet and you can modify it to fit the way that you see cybersecurity, the way that you have set up your cybersecurity program. If you don't agree that a, a one of these controls is detection, you're like, ah, this is mitigation, change it to a red, I don't care. Adjust it to your environment. If you don't agree that this control is foundational, but it should be advanced, move it to advanced. It's your environment. The only thing I ask you is do not delete the control because then you 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 the whole matrix for you won't work anymore right and uh john mentioned something that was interesting uh in, in his conversation he said that he recommended that we do fundamentals first and in the fundamentals he, it was funny because i took note he mentioned 2fa he had mentioned CM and he mentioned patch. There's a couple of others I didn't catch, right? Here's 2FA. Somewhere is CM in here. And I know I have patch somewhere in here. Apply patches and updates. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Someone like John Strand, nothing to do with RCR matrix. Just a few minutes ago, he recommended you focus, we focus on foundational controls. And sure enough, those are the controls that we show here. And so this is the foundational. This is the advanced level. The advanced level builds on top of the foundational. If you do foundational and you do advanced correctly, you are definitely arrive to elite all on your own, right? And the reason why I put elite here is to deal with, with marketing. It's like an inside joke with myself, basically. Uh, how many times have we received an email or we've seen announcements that we have the solution, we have a zero trust solution. It's like, it's, zero trust is no solution for that. There, there, there's no appliance. There's nothing that you can buy to get zero trust. It's a culmination of the maturity of your cybersecurity program. 
So if you have implemented IAM, PAM, uh, network segmentation, if you have implemented 90%, if not 100% of the uh, foundational controls, you will arrive at zero trust by default, right? So I think I have four more minutes. So let's go ahead and take a look at a live demo. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna stop sharing here. And then I'm gonna share my, where is it? Oh, I don't see it. Hmm. Why can I see the internet? Oh, there it is. But it's this one. Do, 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 do. Does everyone see uh, Bryson? Do you see the uh, ransomware control matrix? Sorry, I was double muted. You're up. OK, good. So this is the uh, ransomware control matrix, rcxmatrix.org. Uh, by the way, uh, this uh, one. Can you zoom in though? It's really hard to oh, see. Oh yeah, that. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I have a big S screen here, so let me know if this is better. A little oh, bit more. I... Keep going. Okay. Choo -choo. Let's see. There you go. Okay, good. Good. I appreciate that. By the way, uh, this went viral last week. Uh, someone uh, from Argentina shared this with their. Um, with their followers. And uh, since last Friday until yesterday, we had about 40,000 visitors to the web page, which is amazing. Uh, and basically what it is, it shows you, right? It shows you the foundational, it shows you the advanced and elite, okay? The idea, how do we use this? You have the, the, the controls here on the left and you have a simple question about controls deployed. And your options are yes, no, or maybe, or I need more information. But what is the question? If you go to how to use this section, it'll tell you the question. The question that you should be asking is, have I deployed this control and how good do I feel about this control, right? If you have deployed it, yes. Do I feel good about it? Yes. Then you answer a yes. Right. It should take you no more than one minute per question so that at the end of this 28 first controls, you should have a good idea of where you are from a foundational perspective. If you answer that question correctly, right, truthfully, because you're answering it to yourself is basically looking at yourself in the mirror. If you say to, you, to yourself, uh, security logging and monitoring, have I deployed this? Yes. And then you start saying, you know, having an internal monologue, you know, you start talking to yourself, well, I don't have it everywhere or whatever. If you have an internal monologue, go ahead and do a question mark, right? And, and vulnerability scanning and so forth and so forth, right? You start to fill it in, okay? And the idea is that at the end, right? Uh, as you can see at the end, you can look at this really quickly and get an understanding where you are within 28 minutes, less than 30 minutes, right? Where you are from a foundational level. This is not to be used as a way to grade yourself as a CISO or to grade your cybersecurity program. This is a way to quickly see where you're standing, where you are right now, and identify those areas that you need more information. So security logging and monitoring, yes, I do have it deployed, but I don't know all the information exactly. I, I don't think I know a lot of that information. So anything that's a question mark is something that you can give some of you, one of your team mem uh, members, hey, go ahead and get me more information, do a complete assessment for this specific control. And, and let me know what we find. Or you can give this to your consulting uh, partner organization, right? Tell them, I need you to do a complete assessment specifically to login and monitoring. Come back with a CMMI, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the maturity 
uh, assessment on this. Uh, so I know what I need to do next. If, if you have a no, it means, all right, now you need to prioritize. You know you don't have this control in place. Now you know if this control is good or not, if it's useful to you or not, because of the type of technique that is, is actually mitigating. How else do you, and really quick, uh, Bryson, before we go to Q&A, once you finish with this, right, if you notice, you probably have about 17 controls or so for drive-by compromise, about 17 or 16 for external public facing. What you do then is you count the number of controls in each column that have a Y, and you divide by the total of controls that you need for drive-by compromise, for example. So if you have 10 controls installed for column one, 10 divided by 17 is gonna give you a number and that's your percentage coverage, right? That's like your risk coverage, but it's very quickly, very, uh, very nice and uh, quick and dirty to do. So I leave that to you, rcxmatrix.org, play with this. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a good tool. And as Bryson said, it's getting a lot of very good, very good, uh, good comments and uh, looking forward to hearing more from you about this. So uh, let me just share the last part of the screen again, and then off we go, which is going to be what is not. Do not use this as a checkbox compliance. I've seen people on LinkedIn talking about that. Do not use this as a checkbox compliance tool. It's not that. It's not a tool to measure your assessment. Oh, look, I have all, everything wise, so I'm 100% secure. No, it's not for that. It's just to give you an idea where you are. And, and again, it identifies a set of controls to mitigate, to detect and mitigate ransomware attacks as early as possible. That's the cool thing. Uh, any comments? Rojas.edgar at tcs.com. Visit rcxmatrix.org. There's a, a way for you to send me your comments if you need to uh, have any questions, any suggestions on to prove it. And I appreciate the time. Thank you. Hey, Liz. Hey. So this is fantastic tool and great to see how you've been able to roll it out, you know, in such, a, I'd say the traction you're getting in such a short amount of time. So Thanks I'm for very sharing happy. about it. Very, very, very excited. I remember asking all of you and uh, and uh, about it, and I showed it to the Queen, to uh, to Wendy Nather, who who she told us she had lunch with uh, who was it? Michael Dell at his house. So yeah, she was showing off. So I don't know, just dropping right. names here. Anyway, well, pretty Do soon we have she'll a... be dropping this matrix name in every. Um, <laughs> Uh, every conversation and is one who has been through uh, yes. prior life uh, with ransomware, being able to test and validate and have a game plan that you know, you know has a chance of working is fantastic. Appreciate that. Do we have any questions there, Bryson? I'm not yes, we do have that. questions. So okay. how are the controls in the matrix prioritized and is prioritization uniform or can it be based on the risk profile and threat landscape of an organization? Katarina, by the way, I just got to give you credit. You've been asking some great questions this morning. So that's, thank a, you. that's a really, really good question. Thank you. Uh, I tried to prioritize it, uh, but I, I didn't. I just put them in there in any order. I, I tried to give it some kind of like little understanding, but as I said before, adjusted to what fits your needs, how you see security, right? Uh, if, if you think that some controls should have more priority than others in your organization, shift them around. As I said, don't delete them, but you can shift them around, change the colors. Somebody suggested that we add the purple color if, if, uh, if a control could be both uh, detection and mitigation. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, you know. Do whatever you need to do. Again, this is flexible. It, it, it applies to your the way that you see cybersecurity. Yeah, I want to I want to jump on that one. Andre Almanza in the chat says, but I think that prioritization comes with the implementation, which I think is one example yes. of as you do this that yes. helps. 
um, you understand that. And then the second time where Ed had noted, while it looks like a matrix that you can check boxes on, it is not a checkbox. And <laughs> anything that you are taking this and applying it less as a checklist to more a thinking exercise and a process, that highlights those priorities in it. So this is an example where it's not the destination, it's the journey that you go through that you learn from. Exactly. And, and again, one of the things that I wanted to, to make sure that, that we understand, during the research, I looked, I looked and I looked, frameworks, anything that tells us, here's a set of controls you need to have deployed, right? To make sure that you're in a good place to detect and mitigate. I couldn't find any. And so I created one for myself. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it, it's pretty cool. It's about 82 controls in there so far. And I know there's some missing. Let me know if you find some controls. Like I didn't know about network detect and respond. I had zero experience with that. But I had a good friend, Martin Fisher, I spoke with, and he said, NDR is really, really good. And so I did more research about NDR, and I said, that's pretty cool. So I put that as an advance, right? Um, so if you know of any tools, any new solutions that should be there, let me know. Absolutely continue to update them for version 3. Are the mitigations also mapped back to specific groups based on the TTPs associated with them in MITRE? For example, can I pull controls for all techniques used by TA551 without having to independently enumerate TTPs and then pull controls for each? Yes. I mean, so that's what we did, right? We mapped all those controls to each of the well, seven well-known techniques. Whichever TTPs are under each technique, well, that's a different story, right? But if, if, if those type of attacks fall under those techniques, absolutely, you know, you will know which, which attacks apply. Just look at the columns for each, for example, take a uh, fishing technique, right? Uh, look at every single control with a little check mark under fishing technique. Every type of attack that uses the fishing technique, those controls should map to that. Absolutely. All right. Tough thinking question again from Katarina. Oh, damn. How do you approach risk management and how do you determine the acceptable level of risk for an organization? Great question. And, you know, I thought I had 45 minutes and I've been practicing the 45 minutes and then I was cut down to 20 and I was like, oh, okay, well, put all that stuff aside. Uh, this is all based on how you view your organization. If I'm a CISO, I know the type of person that I am and I'm looking at the foundational Right. I want to make sure that every single of those controls has a CMMI of three and higher. It depends on my priority, how I view it. And I would like to have at least 90% of those controls implemented. But that's just me. I'm anal. <laughs> right. If you if you are open to risk and you feel happy with a CMMI controls of 2.5 and you're happy with 70% coverage, you take the 30% risk, it's your call. No one should be saying, wow, you're crazy, right? About the risk that you're accepting. It's based on your culture, it's based on what you view. Uh, so no, there's no hard line on what the risk should be. It, it's all up to you. I'll, the matrix shows you the controls that, that should be in place. It's up to you if you agree with those and how many of those you have implemented and again it's not only implemented but monitored and maintained right don't just say i installed it and forget about it so i'm okay it doesn't work that way can the control column be mapped under course of actions object i.e sticks i don't know what that means tell you the truth. uh sticks is a um uh, threat intelligence format Oh, okay. Okay. That, that language, that advanced language and stuff like that. So Peter, uh, and, I, and I'm going to murder his name, Peter C uh, Calumaris, Calum yeah, the, that, that started the uh, MITRE Defend Framework. He contacted me a couple of days ago, and he asked me how to leave comments. He was looking for it on GitHub so he could leave comments, right? So that's a question. Uh, to the audience. I don't know about GitHub. It goes, it's not my focus. If you know about GitHub, if you're an expert at that and you like the matrix and you would like to help, contact me. And then we can start 
answering those questions, Bryson. <laughs> but at this point, I don't have an answer for that. I haven't even thought about it, so I don't know what to what to say. Um, I'm going to find uh, my MITRE attack con talk from 2019 called Sticks in the Mud. Uh, Beautiful. So I, will, I will highlight what Sticks does well, as well as where I saw a gap and where Sticks needs to go to effectively being able to uh, drive operational threat intelligence. Perfect. Um, so I will put that in there. Um, and I'm going to give you one more question. Um, okay. What lessons have you learned from previous ransomware attacks and how would you apply those lessons? So uh, uh, there's an article that I wrote on LinkedIn a few weeks ago that focused on a couple of uh, ransomware families towards healthcare, right? And it, it was just, I just used it as a way to kind of test validate the ransomware control matrix. And again, as soon as you look at the research from CISA.gov and other research papers, it identifies all the techniques, the well-known techniques. So all I had to do was just go in there and then review the recommendations by CISA for that specific attack. So CISA recommended multi-factor authentication. It's like, got it. It's there in the advanced section. CISA recommended patch management. There, it's basic. So every single control that CISA.gov recommended, it's all there, all the controls are there. Uh, so I thought that was a good validation. Um, uh, Liz has a lot of uh, experience, unfortunately, uh, on ransomware. Uh, she, she will be better positioned in the future when she has time to take a look and, and, and validate and based, based on her experience. But if you're experienced in ransomware, take a look at it. Let me know if you validate it and, and, and what you find. But that's what I did, uh, just looking at the research papers and mapping back the controls, making sure that they were there. Well, and I think that's where the community engagement uh, yes. becomes, you know, so important and providing that feedback and suggestions and working with each other and kind of building that out. But no, that is fantastic. And thanks again, Ed. And no, uh, thank you. everyone can uh, find, you know, check out the matrix and continue to yeah. help uh, make it better so that we can all do uh, defend better against the next. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Next don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't wait till the end. Don't, don't, don't just focus on backup and restore procedures. We, <laughs> we, can, we can be proactive if we want to. It's just a question of, you know, doing doing some good good preventive steps. So I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.